Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet these easy Tunisian mug rugs, or some people call them coasters. It's just a very, very simple crochet coaster. If you're new to Tunisian crochet, this is a great project for you to start off on. Or if you're just looking for something simple to kind of... Uh, spruce up your home or protect your tabletops this is a great little project for you these little coasters are made using a small amount about 20 yards of your favorite worsted weight cotton you're going to need uh, three or four yards in a contrasting color and then another 17 or 20 yards of um, of a main color I'm going to be using this handicrafter cotton by Burnett uh, and your inspirations. It has about uh, 60, let me see here, uh, 68 yards in a ball and you will get four mug rugs or coasters from this one ball. Okay, so you're going to need two contrasting colors of a cotton. Uh, you can make it uh, in an acrylic yarn. Cotton just holds up a little bit better to uh, heat so that's why I'm using the cotton today. You're also going to need for this project a Tunisian crochet hook or also called an afghan hook and these are longer hooks. You'll find a link in the description of this video for this product on the yarnspirations.com website and uh, this is called an afghan hook. Today I'm using a six millimeter hook uh, with my worsted weight yarn. You'll also want to grab a yarn needle. You're going to use this at the end for working this simple cross stitch design onto your heart. You'll also want a copy of the free written crochet pattern and it can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Again, the direct link is there for you in the description of this video. So uh, let's uh, grab our hooks and our yarn and we're going to crochet these cute, uh, simple, easy Tunisian mug rugs together. Our pattern today is worked in rows and you're going to start by taking your main color. So today I'm using the lavender color uh, as my main color. You're going to start by making a slip knot and then work a foundation chain. So I'm just holding onto my extra long hook. You're going to make your foundation chain the same way you would uh, with a regular crochet hook. You can change the size of this uh, mug rug and uh, it's very flexible. I would just add stitches or subtract stitches in multiples of two. So today we're going to start by making a chain of 16 chains. Sixteen, And this is going to give you a mug rug that is approximately 4.5 by five inches. Once you have your foundation chain worked, we're going to start by working uh, our first row. Now this pattern is worked in the Tunisian simple stitch and for each row it's, uh, it's worked with a forward row and a return row. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into the second chain from our hook. So there's the first chain into this check second chain, into the back bumps, insert your hook, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You're going to continue to do that all the way down the chain, always leaving these loops on your hook. So we're not going to yarn over or anything like that uh, once you get the loop on, except to go into the next chain. So go into the next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You have three loops. You're going to continue to do that all the way down your chain to the very last stitch. Okay. 
I'm just going to keep working along. So you're working down to your very last chain. If you're finding your chain stitches are a little bit tight, you can quickly go back and just make them a little bit looser to make them easier to work into. And then into that final chain. So you can see that I have all of my loops 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 loops now on my hook. I'm now going to work the return row for the simple stitch and to work your return row you're going to yarn over and draw your hook through one loop. That's your first stitch there. You're then going to yarn over again and now pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two more loops, and repeat that all the way across. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So keep going all the way down your chain and you'll see that you are working slowly your stitches off of your hook. So you're always going under, yarning over, and pulling through two loops that are on your hook all the way down to the end. When you come to the end, you will only have one loop left on your hook. We're now going to uh, repeat that process again this time we're working under the horizontal bars of the row below, or the vertical bars I should say, of the row below. So you're not going to work into this first one. Skip that one and insert your hook under the vertical bar, and this is our row two, under our vertical bar of the next stitch. Yarn over and draw up your loop. Just as you did for the forward row down below, you're going to keep that loop on your hook. And you're going to repeat. Next vertical bar, insert your hook under that vertical bar, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Repeat that all the way down your row. Always looking for those vertical bars inserting your hook under it, drawing up a loop, and leaving those loops on your hook. Just like so. When you come to the end of your row, there will be one vertical bar there left. Insert your hook under that bar yarn over and draw up a loop. This is what your work looks like so far. You're now going to repeat your return row, yarn over, pull through the first loop, and keep your edges nice and straight, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat all the way down, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Keep working until you've worked all of the loops off of your hook. And then that is your second row worked. You're now going to repeat this process uh, until you have a total of 13 rows. So we're going to once again repeat those last two rows. So your forward row, inserting your hook under that vertical bar, yarning over and drawing up a loop. You're going to repeat that all the way down and then work a return row. And uh, you're going to do that a total of 11 times. So uh, ending with your return row. 
so a great way to count it is just simply looking at your work you can see kind of these blocks that are going across here uh, and these rows you're just going to count those and you're going to, going to have a total of 13 and then when you have a total of 13 you can uh, meet me back here do not fasten off your work yet I'll show you how to bind off on your final row Once you have worked your square to about 13 rows, you've ended on a return row. We're now going to bind off. To bind off, you're going to, just as you did in your forward rows, insert your hook under the vertical bar, yarn over, and draw up a loop, but this time draw it through the loop that's on your hook, so like a slip stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Insert your hook under the next vertical bar, yarn over, draw up a loop, and draw that loop through the loop on your hook. Continue that all the way across. So this time you will only ever uh, end with one loop on your hook and you're going to continue all the way across. When you come to the end of your row, you're going to work your final slip stitch, and this time you're not going to fasten off you're going to turn your work so that you're working along the side and into your rows and into, into each of these side horizontal bars you're going to work a slip stitch. So we're now going to slip stitch all the way around the side of her coaster and then around the bottom around the next side back up to our first slip stitch across the top. So just continue working around your side when you come to your corner work in a slip stitch into your corner turn your work and then continue working into each stitch. Now along the bottom I'm working under both of those loops for my slip stitch continue working all the way around. When you come to that first slip stitch there on the top corner, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first loop. You can then go ahead and fasten off and weave in your ends. So once you've worked your slip stitches all the way around, this is what your finished piece is going to work look like. You can set your Tunisian uh, crochet hook aside and this is your finished piece, your front and then your back. It's now time to uh, cross stitch our little heart onto the top. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your contrasting color and your yarn needle and you're going to work the design that you'll see here on this chart and then as well this is included in the P and in the uh, pattern that's on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com so you're going to work this hard each of these blue boxes equals one cross stitch so working according to your grid there in that center box number eight and in the third row up you're going to work your first stitch. Now the wonderful thing about the Tunisian symbol stitch is it creates these nice clean lines for your boxes. So when I'm looking at this I see this row down here this is my first row of boxes, my second row and my third row. So I want to count in eight one two three four five six seven eight and then this is my box for my first stitch. So inserting my hook into the bottom corner of that box, coming up through the bottom, I'm going to pull my yarn through. I like to leave a little tail at the end that I'm going to work over 
as I'm working my cross stitches. So I have my, my thread coming up through the bottom left corner. I'm going to then cross over and insert my hook just on the other side of this vertical bar, just like so. Insert my hook and pull it down and I'm going to have this nice diagonal stitch. I'm then going to go down into the bottom right corner of my box, bring my hook back up, pull my yarn through, cross it over to the top left and go down. Just like so and that's my first cross stitch made. Now on my chart I see that there are three cross stitches here on the next row up. So starting into the next box out here, I'm going to bring my hook up in the bottom right corner like so. Pull my yarn all the way through. Make sure that it's not leaving any uh, loops or anything in the back. I can see that I've worked over this thread which is great. I'm going to continue working over top of it to secure it. And then I'm going to bring my hook back down go up across to the top right corner of my box, insert my hook and pull it over. Now when I'm working in rows like this I like to work uh, always in the same direction so I am actually going to uh, insert my hook in the bottom left corner of the next box and continue working my diagonal stitches all the way across like so. Then when I come to the end of the row, and I'll just show you the back here, I've worked over top of that tail that's hanging out, so it's going to hold it in there quite nicely. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom right corner of my stitch, pull my yarn up, and work back in this uh, opposite direction. This is going to make sure that my little X's are always all going the same direction. Once you finish there, cross row two, you're ready to start row three. We're now going to work five stitches across. This little grid that's created is quite handy. My third stitch. fourth, and fifth, and then I'm going to go back in the opposite direction. Like so. So I'm going to leave you to continue cro uh, cross stitching your little hearts into the center of your mug rugs. You can head on over to richtexturescrochet.com, get that chart, take another quick look at the chart here, and uh, finish off your little mug rug. So thank you so much for joining me, and uh, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, take a look around, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.